Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Real Estate Disruptors. Today we have Chris Rude, and he's flown in from Lafayette, Louisiana, to share how he w basically is living the dream that we're all trying to chase. Uh, so we went from wholesaling to buying multifamily and getting passive income. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, I am Steve Tring, broker and owner of Stunning Homes Realty, founder of the Offer Fast Homes app, the only MLS for off-market wholesale properties. And I'm on a mission to create 100 million there. So if that's something you want to do, let's connect on Instagram. If you're excited for today's show, please give me a wave, give me a thumbs up. And as a friendly reminder, I do not charge a dime for this show. I don't make any money doing this. So here's all I ask. If you get value today, please tag a friend. You can uh, share this episode right now, tag a friend below, or tell me your best takeaway from the show later on. That way we can all grow together. And I am asking everyone for help. Um, I need to get 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So, you know, tell your mom, grab a friend's phone, whatever. Go grab it and subscribe so we can get to 10,000. Um, and don't forget, this is a live show. So please post your questions for Chris to answer. You ready? Let's roll. All right. So first question is, what got you into real estate? So back, you remember Katrina, Hurricane Katrina? I do. So 2005, uh, well, let me back up before that. While I was in college, I started an oil change business out the back of my truck. Oh, really? Yeah, and um, changing oil, washing cars, fixing rock ships. By the time I was a senior in college, I was I was making like a hundred grand a year. I was like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going really? to a job. Yeah, so graduated college, you know, did that full time. Got a shop, you know, rented a shop, you know, did really well with the shop. Right around that same time, it was 2005, 2006. Uh, Hurricane Katrina hit. And right around that same time, we were just coming into that big bubble. You remember the bubble we had? Mm -hmm. I think everybody oh, yeah. remembers that. So this is before I even really had an understanding of you know equity and real estate and all that. But I noticed all of a sudden people that bought their house two and three years ago were selling their house and making 50, 60, 70 grand. Mm -hmm. So I had enough uh, you know cognitive awareness. I told my wife, I said, hey, let's just, let, let's flip our house. She's like, uh, okay, let's do that. So we, um, we went ahead and we, we painted a, a couple of rooms, the landscape, the front, put it on MLS, and what, 30 days later, we sold it and made $128,000. I was 25, 20, 25, 26, Patty. Um, so I was like, okay. Um, I just made $125,000 in, in 30 days when, I, when I've been working a whole year to make mm -hmm. less than that. I was like, you know, light bulbs went off in my head. I was like, okay, this is, this is interesting. So went ahead and bought a, 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 another piece of land on the bayou, right? I live on the bayou, right, in Louisiana. Um, For the people that don't know, can you want to explain what a bayou is? A bayou is like, it's not a river and it's not a creek. <laughs> it's like a muddy channel of water that's smaller <laughs> than a river. Yeah, born on the bayou, right? That's, but um, it's, just a, it's just a miniature river. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we bought a, a, a lot and, and we paid 80 for it. And I said, let's, let's try to flip something else again. We put it back on the market and sold it like two months later and sold it for 105, made 25 grand. Really? Yeah, so it, it's crazy, right? So I was like, man, this is, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, now, let me back up though. The, when I, the 125 I made, the 125,000 that I made, I took all that money and I bought a, another physical location from my oil change business okay. on one of the busiest streets in my town from a super distress motivated seller. Mm -hmm. he, he, wasn't, he wasn't paying his taxes, he had problems, paid 860000 for that overnight, doubled my income. So I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm playing almost Monopoly. Went ahead and, you know, flipped that land deal, made twenty five. Then I bought another foreclosure after that, rehabbed it, lived in it for, how long we lived there, Patty? Two years? 18 months. Flipped that, made 60000 and every every time I'd flip some, I'd buy another shop, right? Oh. I would roll it into into another quick lube or it was a quick lube car wash mechanic shops. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with about four shops. I had the the biggest quick lube car wash mechanic shop in my town. We had four locations, had about thirty three employees. I did really really good with that. So I got so busy with the with the quick lubes after I flipped that foreclosure. I focused just on that because I had thirty three employees. I was scaling. I was. 26, 27, I was, I was making close to half a million bucks. You know, I was a wow. 20, so I was like, man, I'm gonna stick with this. Yeah. Um, did that for four or five years, made a lot of money. I took all that money and I bought about $3 million worth of single family homes on MLS. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the wholesale game and I didn't know you can go direct to seller and capture tons of equity. I was like, okay, okay let's just go on MLS and let's make 30 offers every other day. Mm -hmm. See if something sticks. So. I, I would do that and I would I would buy marginal deals. I'd buy 80, 85 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, did that, scaled up to like $3 million. We had like 30, maybe 30, we had 25, 30 single family homes. We got them all rented. I was making like 10 grand a month passive income. I was like, man, I'm, I'm a real estate investor. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm cool, right? But then 2014 hit. And for you guys, when I say 2014, like what the hell is 2014? Where you guys is 2014 was 2008. See, mm -hmm. we, we, didn't miss a, we didn't miss a beat in 2008. Mm -hmm. The South was heavily dependent on oil and gas. Mm -hmm. we, we were killing it. And so yeah. the economy was still really good, but 2014 hit, oil went from $128 a barrel to $28 a barrel. We lost 18,000 jobs just in Lafayette, high paying jobs. These are offshore jobs, people making 80, 100, $150,000 right out of high school. Really hurt the economy big time. Started losing tenants left and right. Um, oil chain shops, I was doing about 2.2 .2 million dollars a year in sales with my shops i was making good money that got cut in half within within probably a year year and a half it just every quarter it was sales are going down 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 i was like like i don't like what i'm gonna do mm -hmm. <laughs> um half my rentals were vacant i started loot instead of being cash flow positive i got to where i was breaking even then i started losing money you're writing checks i was writing checks then i wouldn't cool anymore yeah um then it got to the point where i was i was I wasn't even almost profitable anymore in my shops after letting people go, scaling back, cutting back. But luckily, right around the same time, I was you know, searching on YouTube, which a lot of you guys are probably gonna find this on YouTube, mm -hmm. and I came across wholesaling real estate. I'm like, wholesaling real estate? How do you wholesale real estate? I mean, I know you can flip houses, rehab. So I watched a couple of videos, like, I can do that. Well, went ahead and uh, tried it on my own, did a few deals on the properties I had bought and, and made like marginal, like 2,000 here, you know, 2,500 there, but I couldn't put it all together. I was like, let yeah. me let me go ahead and hire a mentor. So I hired three mentors back to back to back. Well, like 30 days after my first mentorship, I made $47,000 by myself doing it part-time while still running my shops. Yeah, That's when a light bulb went off in my head. I was like, I can make $47,000 by myself part-time while still running these quick lubes. Dude, I'm, I'm in the wrong business. Yeah. So I talked to all my managers, I threw them the keys, I said, hey, Call, don't call me unless somebody dies. I'm doing this full time. Started doing that uh, full time. And that was around four, 2014? Yes, it's 2014, okay. 15. Yeah, when I started wholesaling. Well, okay. 14, I started wholesaling. So it was, right. yeah, about five years ago. Then, as you know, you know, in a bad economy, it's inducive to, it's a great wholesaling environment. Mm -hmm. So there's deals everywhere, right? Yep. People are motivated. People are like, Chris, please buy my house. I'm going to foreclosure. I mean, I was, I was crushing it, right? So, Thank God that I did that because I was able to cover all my losses because mm -hmm. I was losing massive amounts. I was losing 20, 30 grand a month. And uh, I was making, you know, 50, 60, 70. I kept scaling 80. And sometimes I make 100 grand. I'm like, man, this is where it's at. So I'm, I was like, I was just over the moon for this concept called wholesaling, going direct to seller marketing. Yeah. And um, from there, did really, really good in some, some coaching programs. They even asked me to go work in their sales department. So mm -hmm. I got to see the back scenes behind a coaching program yeah. on top of that. And I was like, man, I can do this. Like I, I can coach. I mean, this is, you know, because all the students would reach out to me after I would enroll them for help and I'd give them advice. Like, man, you saved my business, yada, yada, yada. So then I started a coaching company. All right. And right around that same time? No, two, about, about a year and a half, two years later. Okay. Yeah, this is 2016 probably mm -hmm. when, I, when I started the coaching company. Then... Um, from there, um, went to GrowthCon 1, Grant Cardone's first GrowthCon in Miami. There was only 2,500 people there. I mm -hmm. uh, got front row tickets, get, you know, got to hang out with Grant, all the speakers. Um, got hooked up with Grant, went to his office, had a conversation with him, and um, you know, he talked about the wholesale model. He's like, dude, I, I never heard of wholesaling. He's like, this is cool. So yeah. got, got hooked up with Grant and um, you know, started doing a bunch of business with him. And, now I'm just uh, expanding, right? I'm, right. I, I'm, I'm, I sold off all of my shops. So uh, no more shops. I have one left that's still okay. that's still losing about ten grand a month. <laughs> the big one on the main street. Yeah. Okay. No, I sold that one. I made okay. about three hundred grand on that one. I got lucky because <laughs> a national chain bought me out on that one. I did really good, but yeah. uh, the only one I have left, I'm still losing money. But we're trying to get it back going again to sell it off. But um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my story. A fifty thousand foot. You know, story of you know where right. I started, how I got in real estate, how I used it to you know to supplement my other companies. Because really, real estate catapulted me into the oil change business. Because without flipping all those houses, I could have never scaled that well, business. Yeah, so it's funny, right? So you got in real estate, and then well, this is 
I'm making more money on the oil side, right. oil change side. And then you're like, oh, actually, well, maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe, right. maybe the real estate side. Uh, so you said that, you know, you got into wholesaling around 2014, you had a mentor to help you, but like, what were the challenges you had when you first, when you first started wholesaling? challenges um I, I would say um I, I guess the money side of it mm -hmm. you know you know I, i'm I, I didn't flip i didn't really flip any house like i flipped that first house in our house but mm -hmm. i just wanted to wholesale everything yeah um and i, I think i was scared to flip you know i, I guess i wanted i wanted to but I, I i watched these shows i'm like dude and i talked to other flippers like it ain't that cool like you know I th oh I think it's not nearly I, as glorious as it looks on tv no i think people glorify the flipping yeah um so i guess i it took me a while to wrap my mind around wanting to do that mm -hmm. and um you know i'm just starting to flip and, and wholesale a bunch of houses and you know if you guys are watching it young get access to private money if, if you don't have good credit you know work on your credit because I'm telling you right now that that's that's the de facto determining factor if you're going to scale or not because mm -hmm. you can't wholesale forever. Right. You, you want to wholesale forever, but you want to have the money. You got buyers, you got sellers, but that de facto piece in the back is being able to take down deals and having cash because then from there it makes it adds a whole nother it adds a whole nother sector to your business because then you can you can take down deals and throw them back on the MLS. Well, it gives you credibility, it gives you extra strategies. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. It gives you options. Um, especially, you know, I, I think a lot of these newer guys they are getting into wholesaling is, you know, we're all, we're all new at some point, right? But you know, you're, you're going there advertising yourself as a cash buyer and you can't perform. That's right. It's kind of screwing some people over if you don't perform. It is. It's, it's hairy. It's a gray area. I always, I was lucky enough. I was really successful as an entrepreneur. So I had great credit. I mean, I had, you know, I had a million and a half dollars worth of lines of credit at the bank from properties that I own free and clear. So I was very, you know, in, in a position that I could take them down, mm -hmm. but you're right. There's a lot of people that that are you know saying they can take deals down and they can't so if you can't guys you just get access to private money yeah. i'm it's funny because i'm just starting to use private money just this past month is the first time i use private money i've been using my own capital and credit for the past five years which is not smart because i'm scaling into five markets mm -hmm. now and you just can't scale with your own money right um and i think the other thing you talk about too like you can't wholesale forever no. and i think that's true right like wholesaling is great it's an incredible investment vehicle or incredible vehicle for generating income but like you said, the, the scalability is only so far you can go yep. if you're only wholesaling. Uh, so one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about, because a lot of people are wholesaling, you know, people are mm -hmm. listening and I think it's awesome, uh, but we're wholesaling as a, as a stepping stone into something greater. Right. So you want to talk about how you went from wholesaling yep. to right. multifamily, yeah. multiple yeah. Whole, cars, so on. Wholesaling, it's a means to an end, right? Right. That's all it is. It's a it's means a to an end. It's a very high paying job. It's a high, pay, it's a very high paying job. Um, you definitely, if you're gonna have a, a if you're gonna be a professional investor, you definitely want to have a wholesaling business. I'm always gonna have a wholesaling business in my pipeline mm -hmm. to capture my own deals. Right. Right. Wrote a book about this called The Source of the Deal. You, you know, who makes more money, the Ford dealership or the Ford manufacturer? Manufacturer. Right. Because yeah. why? They're the source of the deal. Like right. you want to be in first position, right? Absolutely. So you always want to be in first position. I'm not knocking wholesale. I'm always going to wholesale, but you got to learn. It's it's a, you got to evolve, right? Mm -hmm. It's an evolution, right? You start with wholesaling, then you get access to private money or build your own credit. And then you maybe start doing some wholesaling where the, where properties are not that messed up. It just needs some paint floors, throw it back in MLS mm -hmm. and wholesale it. Then you start getting a little bit more dangerous and, and risque. Mm -hmm. and, and you start maybe taking down some flips. But from there, you want to take all your active income, all of it. Like we have a bunch of sources and we take, I stay broke, guys, stay broke. Like I take all my active income and I dump it all into multifamily, you know, and we're, we're scaling mobile home parks right now. We're rehabbing two mobile home parks right now. I'm, I'm just about done with one. We're about to close on another one in Panama City Beach next week. Um, but basically what, what your end goal is, guys, is, you want cash flow. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Like, you know, my goal, I want a hundred grand a month in cash flow. I'm at, right now I'm at about 25,000 in yeah. cash flow, positive cash flow. I want a hundred grand a month. If I can make a hundred grand a month, and obviously when I get to hundred grand, I'm gonna probably want two or 300 grand. Right? Yeah, it's not gonna stop. Yeah, it's never gonna stop. <laughs> um, but it's peace of mind, it's security, it's freedom. Mm -hmm. um, now granted, you know, you're not gonna go from, from wholesaling to that overnight. Like, you know, I started, in real estate when I was 25. 
right? right? I'm 30, I'm 38, right? And I'm mm-hmm. just, now granted, if I'd, have, if I'd have stuck with whole, if I'd have just wholesale when I was 25, I would probably be light years ahead. I'd, I'd probably- Oh, absolutely. I'm at, we're right at eight, $18.5 million in holdings right now. I guarantee if I'd have wholesaled and started at 25 or known about this, for you cats that are listening in your early 20s, this is the golden goose. Like go all in on wholesaling and learn it. And then over time you will, it's a natural progression. You will yeah. evolve into multifamily if you stick with it. So let's talk about like what has to happen to evolve into okay, that. that. I love that question. So, you know, there's three things for one skills. Mm-hmm. It's the fundamentals. Yeah. You got to have skills because there, there's three things, right? You, got, you need skills, then you need systems, mm-hmm. then you can scale Yeah. in that order. Because if you ain't got skills, you can't create any systems. And if you ain't got no systems, you're not gonna scale. So it's skills, systems, scale. But the skills are the most important by far. I hear all these cat daddies, you know, they hit me up, Chris, I need to know the system. I just need to know the system so I can scale. So, okay, do you have the foundation? Like, do you have the skills? Can you, can, can you communicate really well? Like, what are the fundamentals, right? Yeah. The fundamentals, like, you know, communication skills, um, you know, consistency, um, persistency, you know, th- those basic discipline, like how disciplined are you? Mm-hmm. Those basic things. Most people do get into wholesaling. I mean, what's the, what's the fail rate of wholesaling right now? 95%? I don't know what it is. At but least. I would think it's probably more than 95%. You think it's more? I think it's more than 95%. There you go. So that's a testament. There's no foundation because they're trying to be an entrepreneur in a house of cards. Yeah. There's no foundation. Like how, how are you going to scale something? How are you going to build a house without a foundation? That's why I'm big on personal development, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's, what it, that's what it goes back to, you know? I am huge on personal development, mind, body, spirit. You know, I wanna be the best version of myself. I can't scale my life or my business if me as a, a foundation, as a being, is not the best that I can be. Yeah. It's not possible. So an entrepreneur is a spiritual journey. It's, it's a personal development journey because if you're not, you know, you see all these guys buying courses, buying mentorships, going to different seminars, and they keep failing. Like, dude, put it down. Like, go work on yourself. You're not developed enough to implement the information yet. Mm. You understand that? Yeah. Like you gotta be developed enough internally because it's so hard, it's gonna be, it's, you're gonna get kicked in the net so hard sometimes if you're not ready for it, you're gonna quit. That's so why many I, times. That's Not right. sometimes, not, yeah. so many times. Well, you know, every, every couple weeks I get kicked in the nets. <laughs> so you've got, you gotta develop, you know, balls of steel, Yeah. right? And, and there's no easy way through it. The way out is through. Like mm-hmm. go get kicked in the nuts and feel it, taste it, and and well, that shouldn't have said not taste it, but <laughs> well, taste the pain. Yeah, taste taste the pain, right? Yeah. So, but it, it's um, it's funny because you know I, I I think a lot of cats want the easy road. Like, give me the hard road. Like, the bigger the barrier, the bigger the payout for me. Yeah. Like you know, and if your purpose is not greater than the barrier, you will quit. Like. You, you can't you can't hurt me like my purpose is so huge like I will be successful like dude you could take all my money away right now take away all my assets make me go bankrupt I will do it again because my purpose is greater than the barriers yeah so as far as like when did you know like when when is the right time right as far as like you know if you're, if you're wholesaling like I don't know there's like a if you use a, a monthly revenue um, or a you know a certain amount of wealth like when when would you advise someone to start looking at multifamily? As, uh, uh, to, to, to make that, not transition, but uh, adding to their business? I would, I would say, I mean, look, if, if, you're a young, if you're a young guy and say you got a job and you're wholesaling the side, and let's just say you grab a hold of a 24 unit at 65 cents on the dollar value add deal and it fell in your lap, you know, should you wholesale it and make 70 grand or should you maybe try to partner up with somebody that's got money and grab an equity position, essentially syndicate mm-hmm. or uh, partner up. You know, I, I would I would say, you know, as much as I want to say wholesale and, and get the cash, I think the earlier you do it, as long as you understand the dynamics of multifamily and you understand, you know, the the, the price, the cash flow, and you understand what you're getting yourself into in location, 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 location. Mm-hmm then I would say take it down even if you're younger, if, if you can bring somebody on. But as, essentially I, I would say, but if you have no experience and like you don't know anything about multifamily, I would wait to at least have a hundred grand. Yeah. Get a hundred grand in your pocket, maybe go take down a fourplex. Mm-hmm. You know, do it on a gradient scale. Yeah. But you know, that's gonna be up to 
because you know thinking back like me now i'm like damn what like because i've sold quite a few multifamilies before i started buying multifamily like mm -hmm. dude, what, what was i doing well, right. why did why did i sell that why did i wholesale that and you know i, I regret it you know but hindsight's twenty twenty. But you do you you got to have this certain skill set and knowledge. You got to know. Like you just can't just start buying multifamily. Yeah. I mean, I don't care how good the cap rate is. It ain't worth getting capped. I I, I found that out firsthand. Uh, can you you want to elaborate on that? Uh, well, I, my wife's sitting right there. I blame it on her. <laughs> I, I got this twelve plex I bought about four months ago. Um, she's like Chris. Um, you know. Well, I, I said, I said, baby, let's let's buy this. You know, I got this for sixty thousand a fourplex. They were okay. selling on MLS for ninety thousand. Okay, and, and she's like, yeah, no brainer, Chris. It'll it'll sell in thirty days. So I close on it. The next week, my property manager goes out there to go f find a problem. Like, then she hears pow, 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 and then the tenant goes, oh, they starting early today, baby. <laughs> and my my property manager says, what do you mean they starting early? It's like oh, they starting early. And then here it goes, you know, dude ran across, and another dude's chasing him, they shooting at him. So really, my, yeah, yeah, J yeah, Jackson Square. Look it up, Lafayette, <laughs> Louisiana. <laughs> not a, not a pretty place. Um, so she told me, I'm not going back over there, Chris. You know, and and that was the the start of buying a high cap rate multifamily. It ain't. Did you buy it based off pro forma or I was performing? Gonna, no, I was going to flip it. I okay. wasn't buying it to hold. Yeah, I was buying it to flip it because she said it's they they sit and they don't they sell within thirty days. Gotcha. At anywhere from eighty five to ninety, and I got it off a of RVM drop, and I picked it up for sixty one or sixty two a unit. I was mm -hmm. like, dude, we just throw it back in the MLS and sell it. Mm -hmm. So, but I bought it in October, the end of October, and everything slows down in November and December you know, on MLS in, mm -hmm. in the winter months, people just don't buy that stuff. And I think that's why, but it went up holding it for three months. Mm -hmm. And it was like a complete nightmare. Like, dude, I don't even think human beings lived in there. It was like, it was mutants. I hate this to be <laughs> ugly. It was bad. Yeah. So you gotta be careful about what you buy. Like, you know, somebody, you, you get a, an email from another wholesale saying, oh, great deal, 18 cap rate, 20% cap rate. There's a reason why it's a high cap. Mm -hmm. Cause you're gonna catch a cap. <laughs> um, okay, so if you got a deal, you know, you're uh, while you're you know doing your your regular wholesaling operation, you have an opportunity to get a multifamily. You say, okay, go uh, partner up with somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how would you recommend someone partner up with somebody? Go go find out who's the players in town, like who's buying deals, mm -hmm. and then go show them the value of what you bring. Like, hey, dude, I can like I find deals. Like, I'm a deal finder. Like. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be persuasive, right? Yeah. You, and how do you? How are you persuasive? Confidence. Confidence exudes persuasion. Mm -hmm. So if I was a young cat, you know, I, I would go and, and and go talk to a guy that's, you know, got two million dollars or five, ten million, whatever it may be. And if you know he buys stuff like that, go. Don't tell him about the deal. Show him. Get like a spreadsheet showing. Hey, look, this is what it what I got it for. This is the what it's worth when I'm done. I pulled all the comps in the MLS. I talked to a commercial broker. Here's all the resources I put. Like, show him. Don't mm -hmm. tell him. Once you show him that, you'll get him interested. But if you just go up to it, some guy that's worth twenty, thirty million dollars, say, "Hey, man, I got a deal. You want to partner up with me?" And you're a twenty-four year old cat. I, you know, he's gonna laugh at you. Right. So you're gonna you need to back it up with some facts. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna need to be, you know, confident, intentional, like people in the eye, you know, and, and exude some some knowing this, like you know what the hell you're doing. Right. Because I mean, I, I know, and, and I hate to say it, but there's a, there's a lot of young, like I get pitched deals every day in mm -hmm. my town. It's like, and I try to help them, but it's like, you know, being that I come from a wholesaling background, some of these newer wholesalers, they, they, they don't know what they're talking about and they make themselves look bad. You know, they got to educate themselves and really know and understand the deal. So I stop and I try to, you know, help them with the deal because I want them to send me more deals, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. But it discredits them if they come in there and they, they just try to say, hey man, I got, hey Joe, I got this deal. Um, you wanna buy it, you know, with like no background. <laughs> um, okay, so at which point then did you start acquiring multifamily? Like, are you targeting multifamily now? Yes, we are, we're, we're going direct to seller right now. We're direct mail, cold calling, uh, mobile home park owners. Um, we just took down a 12 plex in, in Panama City Beach, Florida. I'm wholetailing it. We got it for 525, it appraised for 750 as is. Um, Pretty proud of that one. Yeah. So if it, we should throw, be. Yeah, I'm throwing that back on MLS next week. Uh -huh. um, nothing stays on the market longer than 30 days. And here's a key, guys. Here's a key. This is why I talk about wanting to find money, and you got to get access to money because 
and I hate to be ugly about it. I'm mean, that's not being ugly, it's just the facts of the matter, right? These are the freshmen coming up, because I used to be a freshman investor coming up buying deals on MLS. The suckers are on MLS. Mm -hmm. The newbie investors, when you're a newbie investor, what's the first thing you do? Talk to a real estate agent. Talk to an agent. Yeah. Do agents have deals? Sometimes, but most of the time they don't. Well, if it's a good deal, yeah. it might not make it to you. Right, right. But some realtors, a lot of, when, when you're a new investor, a lot of people go to realtors mm -hmm. first instead of a wholesaler, because they don't even know what wholesaling is yet. And then a realtor goes and brings them and show, starts sending them deals that get listed on MLS. And now, you know, in a, in a hot market like this, I can buy a multifamily and throw it on MLS and almost get full retail in yeah. the right markets. Well, and, and it's crazy right now. So yeah. that's one of the questions I have for you because the, the cap rates are so freaking low. Yes. Like everyone's trying to buy multifamily. They're trying, I think maybe people are trying to park their money because of the stock market, whatever, right. but the cap rates are really low right now, multifamily. So are you still trying to acquire and keep multifamily given the, the current conditions? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like I'm going direct to seller. Mm -hmm. If I can catch them before a real estate agent or bro broker catches them, I'm going to get it for cheaper because what is an agent and a broker going to do? They're going to try to drive the price up. I'm going to drive the price down. Mm -hmm. You take them out, they're gonna. They're, not, they're just dealing with me. So it, it's worth it to buy and hold if you're getting it directly from. Yeah, the absolutely. I don't care how hot the, how the market is right now. Mm -hmm. I'm buying deals, sixty five. I mean, we bought. We bought a park in Bonifay, Florida, two months ago. We paid five seventy five for it. It appraised for eight thirty five as is. With and it's, the gross income is thirteen five. It's yeah. about a C minus park, right? Right. So. You talk to some people and, you, and they would say, well, it, the market's so hot, you can't find deals like that. Well, I'm back different. There's baby boomers all over the place that are just unloading their deals right now because they've made their money. They've owned them for 20, 30 years. They don't mm -hmm. care about the equity. You, you meet them face to face. You, you build a lot of rapport. You, you, know, you, you become their friend. Dude, they'll want to help you out. Right. There's deals out there even in a hot market. I'm doing it. So how are you targeting these people? Direct mail. It, we're, we're killing with direct mail on the multifamily side. Yeah. So you're finding out where they live Yep. And you're mailing them at their homes. No, we're we're mailing the parks. Mailing the parks. Yep. Okay. Yep. So hoping like the property manager sees it. Yeah. Gotcha. I go after the low hanging fruit. I don't go after the the eighty, ninety, hundred plus units because that big money's chasing that. The sweet spot is in between, and I don't go after the four and twelve. I only buy twenty four units above. That's why we're hotailing that twelve uh, unit, that mm -hmm. twelve uh, you know apartment complex because. It's, it's just too small. I want 24 units or more. Mm -hmm. But the tw when you go from 24 units to 50, that's like a little niche area where the big money don't want to mess with it because it's not enough it's units. Too small. And then the, the smaller players, they can't afford it. They can buy a 12 pla or a 12 plex or a four plex, but they can't buy a 24 unit. Mm. So I find, at least this is my experience thus far, is that that's where the, the beefy equity deals are at. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, something I want to hit on, because uh, you, you, you mentioned earlier that everyone was scared during that time when oil prices dropped yep. and you were finding deals. Because everyone that's listening, not listening, but everyone that's wholesaling today, for the most part, is still pretty new. And they've only known a good market. Yeah, They don't know a bad market. And so like one of the questions I, I, I get asked time to time, like, what are you gonna do when the market changes? And like, buy deeper. But you were in that market. Yes. So you wanna talk about what the market was like when you were uh, in down market. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's a lot of deals, they're plentiful. Now investors will be a little, a lot more scared. Mm -hmm. um, so you can still sell deals because the the smart money is still got money, but they're gonna want They're gonna want a really good deal. Right. So it's not like you know you it's a it's a down market. There's deals everywhere, and it's like everybody's a buyer you, because the down market is gonna wipe out a lot of the your buyers that used to buy from you. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah scared so, money goes on the sidelines. That's right. But they're, st they're still gonna, you just gonna, you gotta, ha listen, you gotta have a bunch of different ways of making money. Like mm -hmm. you can't just depend on wholesaling. Like, dude, if you got a job making 60, 70 grand a year and you're making 10, 20 grand wholesaling a month or every other month, dude, keep your job. If you're doing both, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, keep it, you know, you wanna have multiple streams of income. Like that's, I've always done that. And that's, that's what, honestly, I mean, let's look back at that crash. What saved me in that crash? Cause I would be bankrupt right now. What saved me in that crash is that I, I got- had business. I had, well, the, the oil change business was going under. Mm -hmm. My rentals were, half of them were vacant, but I started that wholesaling business. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. And, and I was still working in a sales department for a coaching company making 10, 12 grand selling for them. Mm -hmm. So I had, I had this, I was making 10, 12 grand a month selling, plus I was making 40, 50, 60,000 a month wholesaling. 
So that's two streams right there, but my other two streams are dead and dying. Right. So my, my other two streams save those two streams, right? Mm-hmm. So the point is, don't just do one thing, like do a bunch of different things, but you wanna keep it all in the same wheelhouse. Like for me, right? I got the wholesaling, I got the flipping, I got the wholesaling. We're in five markets, I have a coaching company, we have the, the multifamily, the mobile home parks, like my wife's a realtor, we're doing land development deals. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm not, you don't, you don't wanna be a one trick pony, but you also don't wanna be so diversified that you're, you're all over the place. I mean, I have, yeah. a, you know, I have a team of, you know, we have seven people working for us. So it's not like you hear me saying all these different things, like, man, this dude's all over the place. No, like my wife handles all the flips locally. She's working on a, a multi-million dollar land development deal that we're about to close on. Make, we'll probably make seven, about 700 grand on that deal. Um, you know, every market that we're in, besides the market I'm in, I have an acquisition manager. Mm-hmm. So I'm not spread that thin to where I'm, you know, you got to be careful because you, you go and read books like the one thing, right? And they'll say, just do one thing. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily agree with that because yeah. I don't do one thing. Well, why can't I do more than one thing? I do yeah. it all day, every day. Right. You know? Yeah. I think if you take it too literally, for sure, it's going to be a problem. Right. But I think the idea is not to start too many different businesses or. Right. Spread yourself too thin. Yeah. Try to be a jack of too many trades. Mm-hmm. But you also don't want to be a one trick pony. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Right now, you know, when you guys are buying house, are, are, so you're wholesaling, you're doing wholesaling traditional houses. Correct. Okay, so when you guys are offering on these homes, like what do you guys typically offer on? See, this is a good question because everybody says, man, ARV minus 70% of what, I don't know, that whatever, I don't even pay mm-hmm. attention to that. Dude, I make my offer on motivation. Okay. I base my offer on motivation. If I'm buying a house, let's, let me give an example. I bought a house in Baton Rouge. You know, he called me, it was PPC lead. It was a, it was a hoarder. Mm-hmm. I, I walked into his house. My wife was with me. We come back from from vacation. I was like, "Let's just stop." When we were right here, it was in Baton Rouge, heading back home to Lafayette. He had four foot of trash. I'm not kidding you. It was four foot. I had to climb up on top, and I can touch the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And he was pretending that he didn't live there. It was his uncle's house, and I knew he was lying, which most motivated sellers lie. Um, and he's showing me the house and this and that, and you know, the house ARV was probably about two twenty five my maximum allowable offer in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm already, I'm do, as I'm talking, I'm doing calculations, like my mind's running. Uh, I'm not gonna give him no more than about 90, that'd be max, I'll probably wholesale it for 100, mm-hmm. max, they'll probably put 60, 70 grand into it and still make enough money for them. However, based off the motivation, I know he wanted to sell, he wanted to sell fast, and he wasn't shopping me. How mm-hmm. do I know that? because he does, he was embarrassed. He doesn't want to show anybody else. Like, man, just, I, I just really want to be done with this. You just gotta listen. The motivated sellers will tell you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I just want to be done with this. So in my mind, I'm like, this guy's super motivated. Obviously he is, he got four foot. It's like he was making a nest, the poor guy. It was, it, was, it was horrible, you know? Yeah. But a lot of investors leave so much money on the table because they follow this stupid formula. Mm-hmm. There's no, dude, this is, a, this is an art. This ain't an exact science. Oh yeah, 100%. People are trying to say like, do this every time. Like, no, do this different song and dance every time. You got to dance a different move. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, in my mind, ninety, but I'm going to offer him some ridiculous amount lower than that because I know he needs to sell and he's motivated mm-hmm. and he probably doesn't care. So I said, man, like I really, I really need to get this fellow. It needs a lot of work, um, which it did. I need to get this thing for forty grand. Mm-hmm. He goes, ah, oh, Chris. Um, Man, if you can do 50, you got a deal. Mm-hmm. 50, you got yeah. a deal. I'm thinking he's gonna come back at like, he's gonna tell me 90 or 80. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, and I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, yes. I'm like, yes. And then I'm like, um, I tell you what, I, can you meet me in the middle of 45? He goes, yeah, let's just go ahead and do 45. All right. So I'm like, 45 grand. Most people to offer that guy 90,000 and left what $50,000 on the table because they basing their offer off of this stupid formula. Yeah. Base your offer off of motivation. Well, the reason I was asking that question, because I want to go back to the question earlier about, you know, in a down market, yeah. what you were buying for. Because in a down market, you can't pay 70%. Like it just won't work because you, your holding costs right. and your end buyer will not pay that, right? So when you were buying it in the, in, in the down market, like what, what were you doing then? I was buying really, really low. I mean, I was buying, I was buying at fifty cents on the dollar on almost yeah. everything, almost everything across the board, mm-hmm. except for a spectacular location might have been sixty. Yeah. Um, you just have, like you said, it's it's all it's all timing, it's knowingness. Like you got to know the inside and outs of your market. Like, 
Now, how many times have you had other wholesalers call you and they're like, hey man, I got this smoking hot deal. I know you're a buyer and he sends you the deal and it's like retail. It happens every <laughs> week to me. Multiple it, times a day. Multi, yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, dude, it's not a deal. And you, you, you want to help them and you say, because I want them to send me deals, but it's, I mean, it's all day, every day. So they're knowing this is so low, they'll never bet it. They'll never better do deals because all we're doing essentially is it, it's arbitrage, right? It, we're day mm -hmm. we're day trading real estate. Absolutely. So it's it's information based, knowing the market. All these day traders, what do they do? They read analytics. They freaking they just know. The same thing goes with real estate. Like it, it ain't this ain't no for clowns, right? Like you got to be a sharp cap to do this on yeah. a on a big scale and to actually make a lot of money. So you got to deep dive and you guys are listening you young guys in your 20s like deep dive like network with all the realtors know the streets know the neighborhoods know it inside and out because the more you know like you know what, what did warren buffett say the more you know the or the more you earn i screwed all that up or something like that warren buffett says something about the more you the more you learn the more you earn that's what he said there you go there yes you go. i've heard that one yeah so and it's so true right it's just it's it's going back to knowing um so ginzel wants to know uh when is the right time to approach someone for mentorship in wholesaling? Man, um, as soon as you can afford it, that's the that's the foundation. I mean, the only reason I I'm in a position where I'm at, honestly, is because I've I've spent more money than you in personal development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've probably spent, and my wife can she knows because I stroke checks and she's like, uh, uh, you sure you want to do it? I, yeah. I've I've spent at least three hundred grand, maybe more than that, in personal yeah. development. Um, because, and that's what's made my foundation, right? And I did that at an early age. When I was 20, 22, I started on my personal development. I mean, I my first stroke check I wrote was $25,000 yeah. for like courses, seminars, doing all kinds of stuff. And, um, and I borrowed the money. I took a loan out at the bank. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, it's non-conventional. You know, she's laughing right now. It's non-conventional <laughs> and it's crazy, but yeah. you gotta be crazy. Mm -hmm. This is not normal. Like you gotta be off to be an entrepreneur. Like stop trying to do what everybody else does. Like stop following the yeah, sheep. You can't be a normal person. No, you can't. Cause it's so crazy what we do that any logical thing or uh, thinking it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like you can't have an engineer's mind and be an entrepreneur. I mean, you yeah. can, but it's, it's tough. Yeah. It is tough. I, and I'm a, I'm a former engineer, so I definitely agree yeah. with that. Um, okay, so then um, this is probably going to be a silly question here, but you know, how is your business different, your wholesaling business, different than the, 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 the wholesalers in your community, man, in your I'm market? The, man, I, I'm, I'm dynamic. I'm the most dynamic investor in town. You come to my town, like you know who Chris Root is, and I want you to know who I am because I'm branded. Like I, yeah. get, I get so many organic deals because – I'm everywhere. I tell everybody. I'm on Facebook. I'm on billboards. I'm in your mailbox. I'm everywhere. I'm on Facebook Live. Like, I want to be everywhere, um, and I'm just dynamic. Like, I'm yeah. not a one-trick pony. I can take down deals. I'm doing a multi-million-dollar land development deal. I can buy mobile home parks. I construct. I just bought a, a mobile home park on on terms on owner finance. You 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 got to be diversified. You, you can't just do wholesaling. Yeah, because you're gonna quit eventually. <laughs> um, so your, your, your wholesaling operation, I mean, what, what does your organization look like in your wholesaling yeah. so, operation? So I want to own, I'm not, I, I mean, we do direct mail a little mm -hmm. bit. We're not like, I don't spend $20,000 a month in direct mail. Um, I, I want to own the online space. Mm -hmm. That's all I do. I own the online space everywhere. Every market I get, I want to own, own it because I don't want to chase motivation. I want motivation chasing me. I don't want to yeah. work that hard. Um, I want to work smart. I do want to work hard, but I want to work, I want to work really, really hard, but really, really smart. Like, yeah. So if I'm owning the online space, by far, definitively, I've measured it, split tested it, online leads are the best leads mm -hmm. as far as motivation. Because why? What's the, what's the psychology of somebody going on their phone typing in, sell my house fast? They're active. They're active and they, they, got, a, they got a problem. Right. So I know I can scale big and wide. And if you look at all the big major brands, what are they? They're all on, like they're, they're all going online, like they're trying to dominate online. Absolutely. So, so you go on all the markets I'm in. I'm no, I'm number one in almost every one of my markets that I'm in. So is that pay per click only or SEO oh, no. too? Oh no, SEO, PPC, Facebook, and that's yeah. I want to. That's my three main things. Now we do a lot of newspaper articles. We do direct mail. We do some cold calling. The cold calling is more mostly for um, multifamily. That's it. Mm -hmm. Um, what else did we do? That's pretty much it, man. I mean, it's networking. I get a lot of deals with networking, man. You know, just being in the know, branding. That's so. Like, give me give me some examples of what networking. Is. Okay, perfect example. I go to work out every morning. Every single realtor. If I if you're a realtor, I want you to know me. Mm -hmm. Every single realtor. Every single 
uh, contract, I want you to know who Chris Root is. Uh, so when I work out in the mornings at a place called Reds, I work out in this huge gym, one of the nicest gyms in the country. Um, every realtor that passes me, hey man, where's my deals? Like, I know you got deals, like stop stop playing, man. You ain't sending me those deals. Why am I doing that? And I do it almost every time I see them and like they laugh, right? When they see me before I even say something because they know I'm about to say, where's the deals? Mm -hmm. What am I doing? I'm branding, I'm branding, I'm hitting them in the mind. So wh who's the first person to be top of mind when they get a pocket listing? Chris. Yeah, right, it's, yeah. just, it's simple. It's just massive, obnoxious communication to the point where everybody knows who you are. Now, it, it takes a lot of communication to do that, and it takes a lot of getting out of your own way and not giving a fuck what people think about you. Mm -hmm. Mo that's a lot of these cats that you know just get into being an entrepreneur or a real estate investor. You care too much about what people think about you. Yeah. You know, you're gonna have to get wild, you're gonna have to get loud, you're gonna have to get obnoxious, you're gonna have to communicate on a massive scale to where everybody knows who you are and what you do and what you're about. Yeah, so when you talk about billboards, SEO, pay-per-click, Facebook, all these things add up. Yeah. So what is your monthly marketing spend? It's about 20 grand a month. In one market or multiple markets? Oh no, multiple markets. That's all we're spending, about 20. About it's 20 not too grand. bad, I mean, billboards, yeah. I just got rid of the billboards. Okay. I, I just got rid of the billboards and we upped some PPC. Yeah. Because the billboards weren't, uh, they, were, they were profitable, mm -hmm. but not like other things. So we just let it, let it go and I'm it's great for branding. Don't get me wrong. It's I was going to say. That's it, the reason we did it for about two years. Mm -hmm. and But I don't yeah. need to do billboards. Everybody knows me and my town. So I already right. get the, the deals organically. So um, billboards are great when you first get started. They're super expensive. Yeah. Um, that's why I was asking about the marketing. Yeah, no, we, we, that's why we got rid of it because it's really expensive. Okay, so then you you mentioned like if you're in a market, you want to dominate. So yep. what markets are you in? Lafayette, Baton Rouge. We just got into New Orleans, Panama City Beach, Florida, Pensacola, um, and Mobile, Alabama. Okay, so you're in three different states. Yep. Uh, you see, you have an as, uh, acquisition manager in each one. In each one. Yep. What are the, what are they responsible for? So leads come into the office, we qualify them for motivation, and we just quarterback all day. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I work the local market in Lafayette. Uh, I do, I take all the leads that come through. Like, you know, I, you I'm, are working them. I'm working them. Yeah, dude, I work. Like, you come hang out with me, dude, you're not going to eat, you're hardly going to sleep, and we're going to live off of solar power and deals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, Ben knows. <laughs> He's hung out with me. You ain't going to eat, dude. Like, I don't eat. Like, I just, I'm built that way. I want to, yeah. I, I want to work because it just, that's just who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know I can't be in five markets in three states, but if I don't have that, you know, come hang out with me, my wife would say, I'll drive you crazy. Like, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm just like a squirrel chasing yeah. his tail all day. Mm -hmm. I need something to do. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we have a beach house in Destin, Florida. We go there and like after three days, like the, I started a, a wholesaling business in the panhandle just so I can have something to do with my beach house. That's the only reason I started a, a <laughs> we started wholesaling and flipping out there because I can't, I can't not do something. You can't sit still. No, I can't sit still. I got real bad ADD and just, I need to, I need to do something. Yeah. So anyway, so leads come in, we, we qualify them and then we just, we just send them out. Then from there, they, they're responsible for everything after that. Uh, following up, um, selling a deal. Like I'm not a big, I, 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 I think these guys that are, you know, I don't really think, I don't believe in like a that disposition uh, then then a, a deal coordinator like dude the acquisition can do disposition mm -hmm. unless you're doing 50 deals a month or even maybe 30 to 50 dude you don't need acquisition disposition deal coordinator like dude, there's too much payroll mm -hmm. you know like if you're scaling yeah you need all that right but i mean dude if you're not doing more than 30 40 deals a day or a month you don't need that so then how many deals are you doing a month we're averaging about 15 20 deals a month okay and then what is your uh, average fee on a wholesale, mm -hmm. probably about twelve five. Okay, uh, so I'm in, a, I'm in lower end markets too. You get, it's all relative. Like I'm mm -hmm. in South Louisiana. I mean, it's a lower. I mean, I love my state, but Louisiana is like last and everything that's bad and first and everything that's uh, <laughs> you know it's just it's just how it is. It's it's not the economically it's not the best state. Everything's it's a poor state, right? Yeah, Alabama too. Alabama's not the greatest state. Now the Panhandle of Florida, where I'm where I'm at. Um, our margins are a lot better in mm -hmm. Florida than they are in Louisiana. Yeah. Um, so I think it's relative. You know. You know, eight to twelve thousand is about an average deal on, on a wholesale on a flip. Thirty on a whole hotel, forty to fifty. So how much are you flipping? We're doing about eighty percent. What? Well, no, lately it's been less. We're doing about seventy percent wholesale. Twenty percent flip, ten mm -hmm. percent hotel. Yeah, I mean the hotels are the best deals. I mean, but those are like you don't get those every day. No, you don't. 
but we all love them. Oh man, do we? I mean. So you were talking about personal development, right? Mm -hmm. So you said, you know, you dropped 300 K, which, you know, you're the only person I know that spent more than I have. So congratulations. <laughs> uh, I spent a ridiculous amount as well. Um, where, you know, as someone that's new, like what, you know, you got personal development, you got, you know, sp industry specific mentorship, like what would you recommend for someone to start building their foundation? First thing I do is read. I would read, read, read. You know, I, I recommend five books to my students. The, this, the first book I'd read is on mindset is The Science of Getting Rich. It's mm -hmm. the original book written on mindset by a guy, a guy named uh, Wallace D. Walter, Wallace D. Wallace, mm -hmm. back like in 1918. Mm -hmm. Like the stuff he wrote about was amazing. Like everybody thinks Think and Grow Rich is like the la creme de la creme of, mm -hmm. it's not. Like that book was written, Think and Grow Rich was copied off of the science of getting rich. Read mm -hmm. that book first, then read Think and Grow Rich. Okay. Um, that's gonna, those two books would be perfect for your mindset. Then after that, I would read The Compound Effect mm -hmm. by Darren Hardy, which is on habits, routines, like just being consistent and disciplined. Then The Slight Edge, phenomenal book, you know, on the little things that you need to do every day consistently over time. Then obviously, you know, Grant Cardone's 10X Rule on action, right? Mm -hmm. Just taking massive amounts of action. Um, psycho cybernetics is one on mindset, but it's more or less, more or less uh, for your self belief, like how you think about yourself. The way you think about yourself is what other people think about you. Like if you're mm -hmm. confident, yeah. Like if you know you're confident, other people right. are gonna think you're confident. Like it's just a mirror effect, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what he talks about a lot. But there's so much knowledge and like value out there, like. There's so much opportunity. There's way more opportunity than our grandfathers and even our fathers and great grandfathers Same right now. Like it's not. Even, they didn't have YouTube. Mm -hmm. They didn't have Instagram and Facebook where you can watch like big players do what they do. Um, like just deep dive like YouTube. You deep dive. Uh, you know these books. You know, but not even just that on the mind. Like you got you got other aspects to you. Like you got mind, body, spirit. Right. Like mm -hmm. if you just reading all day and like you're a, a massive reader, but like I know you know those people that I just like. 10X readers, but they don't do nothing. Professional students. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. right? Or you got those guys, let's, let's do the reverse, right? You got those guys that are at the gym that are all roided up, but mm -hmm. then they're broke, you know? Like, mm -hmm. but they look amazing. They got like a body of a goddess, mm -hmm. right? Because they're they're out, of, they're out of balance, right? So, yeah. and then you got those guys that are just spiritually and morally bankrupt, you know? They're on drugs, they go on the titty bars. Sorry for all you guys are going to titty bars. Um, you know, just have no ethics, right? Mm -hmm. You know, ethics is a spiritual thing, like doing the right thing. Um, so mind, body, spirit, right? So if you have those, you know, it, 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 I'm a big faster, right? You know, I, I hardly eat. I eat maybe one meal a day. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I will eat a mean crawfish etouffee on Friday nights with my wife with some rice. <laughs> um, but if, who, you know, let's just say you're worth $100 million or you're making a couple million bucks a year, but you're 100 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, you, so so what? Like, you're miserable. You're miserable and rich, you know? Mm -hmm. But you can't, you can't enjoy money unless your body feels good. Right. So it's a balancing act, right? So if you're young, my advice to you is is work on yourself. Like don't just work, don't just read, and don't don't just work out all the time. But you're broke, mm -hmm. and or maybe you're just a super religious guy and you don't like do anything because you want to be a nun or something. And mm -hmm. God wants you to be rich, <laughs> you yeah. know. So um, you know that would be my advice, and and run towards your fear, man. Like you grow, like you. You got to pull yourself out of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be speaking in front of 1,500 people tomorrow. Have I spoken in front of 1,500 people? No, the most people I've ever spoken in front of is like 200 people. Yeah. Am I like, like just don't have any anxiety about that? Of course I do have anxiety, but I want to have anxiety. Like I live and I want to live in a state of fear because I'm growing massively. Yeah. Right. And people may be like, what the what was he saying? Grow like stay in fear. Like I'm telling you guys, fear is because you're busting through barriers, yep. mental barriers. Do what you fear. Yeah, and you're gonna grow. Uh, let's see what else is, it was Wallace Waddles, that was the name. Yep. Yeah. And Jeremy Tag says that's an awesome book list. Um, so Chris Kennedy wants to know, you know, Christopher Kennedy, he, he's created an automated system that generates leads through Google and pay-per-click, but let's see, I don't really see what the question here is. Well, let's talk about that too, you know, we can all market, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can teach a monkey how to market, but Dude, if you ain't got skills, you ain't gonna close no deals. Yeah. Let's be real. I, I can. That's a big problem with a lot of you know guys that get into the business is they, 
they generate all these leads. It's like, man, I'm Chris, I'm spending five thousand dollars a month, but I ain't close no deals. Okay, dude, what, what kind of conversations are you having? Like, mm-hmm. your, your people skills are terrible. Like, you got to learn to talk to people. You got to be persuasive. You got to mm-hmm. you got to be a likable person, especially mm-hmm. in this business. Like, that's why people that are really good at sales really do good at this business. Absolutely. You know, it's you so have to connect. you have to connect. You know, and and that's a big thing in my you know in my coaching program. Like, we're big on personal development and people skills and communication skills. That's dude. That's the number one thing. Mm-hmm. You know, because I could have a shoestring budget, but be a killer sales guy and just a, a likable guy, and it can close people, and I'll dominate you with your five ten thousand dollar marketing budget. Right, and that's something that I've uh, I've been harping on recently is that with you know all the information that's available today, marketing is not the challenge. Right, yep. if you got money, you can market. Right. So now, since everyone's on a level playing field in marketing, how are you separating yourself? Right. And it's the skills. You asking me that? No, I'm saying like oh, I, yeah, that's something I, I 100% believe yeah. in. Yeah, no, 100%. And it's yeah. so elementary, but it's so th- the most obvious things are the stupidest things in your face mm-hmm. that you don't see, guys. Like yeah. it's it's skills, it's communication skills. Well, I mean, not too long ago though, it wasn't as important because it was a little harder. Like two years ago, it was a lot harder to yeah, market. No doubt, right? Like you couldn't. There was not a bulk ship tracing service. There wasn't. Right. We got uh, it made. Uh, yeah, it's really easy now to get in front of uh, in front of homeowners. Um, let's see what else is there. I'm trying to go through these people's questions. Uh, Big Brother in Life wants to know what your website is for coaching. You can go to chrisrude.com and uh, and book a call. You know, and listen, if you if you can't afford five hundred to a thousand bucks a month in marketing, you know, we we, we generally don't take students because there's, you know we don't want to take money. If, if you can't afford that, you're probably not ready for my coaching because yeah. it's going to cost you money, guys. I, you know, go to YouTube, get as much information you can, get you some bandit signs, get gets do some driving for dollars. Um, knock on doors, like do the hard work, do the things that are, if you ain't got no money, you're gonna have to put in a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Like me, I have the money to spend on marketing, so I don't have to like eat up my time doing the, you know, driving for dollars and all that. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's an inverse yield, inverse effect. But when you first get started, you're gonna have to do the hard work, guys. Yeah. What is your why? Man, I, potential. Like, I just, I wanna, like I, my, I have a massive mind called potential. We do twice here in my beach house. Like I just want to live. Like I want my. I want to be remembered. Like I want my kids. My great. I want my great grandkids to be like, hey man, you remember Papa Rude? You remember Papa yeah. Rude? Like he, he did some some big stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. We got Rude way over there. That they named that street after him. Like how do you live forever? Like you live leave a legacy. Mm-hmm. Like what are the biggest people in the, in the world? Like their names are in buildings. Like Trump. Like I'm not comparing myself to Trump. That, I'm, but that's that's a. That's a measuring stick. Like I want to, I want to reach for that, right? right. I, I want to do big stuff. I want to buildings, libraries. Yeah, streets. like I want to just, yeah. you know, be, be better to be remembered. Like you know, everybody's trying to figure out how to live to 150. Well, shit, how do you live to to be 500 years old? Where mm-hmm. you know your great great grandkids knew you because you did something so big. You know, that's that, that's that's what I want. I just want to live up to my potential. Kind of like Carnegie. Yeah, 100. percent right. Yeah. I mean, Lick Carnegie was what? That was almost 150 years ago. Uh, it was about 100 years ago. Yeah. 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 So, um, so elaborating on that, right? Because you know, uh, you brought your wife here. You brought your kids here. Yep. So, uh, one of the things that I, I see for young entrepreneurs, or not young entrepreneurs, but newer entrepreneurs, is this work-life balance. Then it's it's bullshit. 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 Yeah. I want my kids to see me work like a freak. Like, yeah. I, because I want them to work like a freak. Yeah. Because I want if I if I put in the hard work now, like I work every day so that I can choose to work no day. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's kind of like a Dave Ramsey, live uh, like no other, so that one day you can right. live. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like no other. So I work like I I work till ten o'clock some nights. Mm-hmm. I'll work seven days a week if I have to. If there's stuff to get done, I'm doing it. I don't put it in the back burner. And and listen, you would think, oh, he's always working. I'm really not. Like me and my wife go hang out. You know, a couple of days during the week because I get stuff done. Like I don't look at Sunday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Saturday. Like it's just is the work there and easy again. Okay, execute, get it done. Like mm-hmm. take all the time out of it and get it done. Um, you know, and as far as my kids, you know, like I still, I mean, we swim with the babies every. I got five kids. Like every almost every afternoon we swim with the babies. Mm-hmm. You know, not every, but a lot. Like I spend a lot of time with my kids, and I want my kids to mimic me, yeah. and I want them to see what I'm doing, and I want to, you know, and you. I make it hard on my kids. Like I'm hard on my kids. Like yeah. hard. I got. What does I gotta, that mean? Like, like I don't give them like everything they want. I got a 19 year old kid that just moved to to California. I don't mm-hmm. help him at all. He moved out there. He wanted to go to California. I said I don't help. Him. I bought him a car. Mm-hmm. I don't pay his. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. He he moved to California. He said that he right before he graduated high school. He said, Dad, I'm moving to California with one of my buddies. I said no, you're not. 
he goes, okay. So two days before he uh, graduates high school, he says, dad, I'm moving to California. I don't care what you say. I said, boy, I said, no, you're not. I said, you ain't got no skills. You never had a job. You just graduated in high school. You need to come work for me. He said, okay, dad. Two weeks later, I bought him a brand new Toyota Tacoma, loaded out Mac Daddy four-wheel drive, $42,000 truck mm-hmm. as his gift, right? You know, for, you know, and, then he, and he's gonna come work with me and start laying some floors. And like, I want him to do hard work, like yeah. painting, laying floors, installing refrigerators in the mobile homes and everything. Well, he did that for about two weeks. And then one day he woke up and his truck was in the, in the driveway and it was unlocked with, with the keys and we couldn't find him. And uh, my wife started freaking out. I was like, dude, I think Alex left. And I said, no, he didn't, there's no way. So he wouldn't answer his phone and like finally a whole day passed by and we're like, yeah, he's probably in California. So mm-hmm. he left him with, and I called him and um, he's like, yeah, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and you can do about it, I'm, I'm 19. Yeah. Like, what I'm gonna do about it? So he didn't have a vehicle for seven. I, I said, oh, I ain't helping you. He said, okay because I want to make it hard on them, right? Yeah. It's character building. Like mm-hmm. if everything's so easy, like you don't build no, you don't build no like coping skills in life. So he stayed out there seven months with no vehicle, living with a buddy, got a job at Target, like jumping, carpooling with people. How much you think he learned with that experience? A lot. A lot. Mm-hmm. And finally, after seven months, I, I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I bought him a, a freaking hoopty. I bought him a 1992 Pontiac Grand Am with 182,000 miles, no power, no power steering, no AC, and the doors didn't open from the inside, and the windows don't roll up and down. I made him drive that for another f- five months, Mama. Was that a five hundred dollar car? It was fifteen hundred bucks. Okay. I overpaid for it. I didn't like. He got. I got ripped off on that deal. He drove it for like four months, and then it like. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even start anymore. And then he went to go trade it in. I said like, okay, I really, cause I was trying to make him suffer cause I wanted him to come back, mm-hmm. but he wasn't coming back. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go buy your vehicle. I said, go trade that car. And they wouldn't even take the car. <laughs> 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 they wouldn't give him any money. <laughs> so I bought him a, I bought him a Honda Civic, you know, yeah. a Ford Honda Civic, good on gas. And, um, but no, I'm proud of him. Like, you know, now he's working at a, a pizza restaurant during, uh, at night. And then he does Uber Eats, is it called mama? Mm-hmm. Where he, 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 he drops off food. Yeah. And he's making, you know, he's making 150, 200 bucks a day when he works all day and then he goes working. So, but he's building life coping skills. Absolutely. I'm setting the foundation for him for hard work. Yeah. You know, so it's, you know, I want him to suffer. Like, stop not letting your kids suffer. Like, Absolutely. No, that's something I'm very big, very big uh, fan of. You know, I struggled a lot, or not I, our family struggled a lot when I was growing up. And so it's something that I always, you know, been concerned about. Right. But yeah, our kids suffer too. Um, it's and, and one more thing I want to add to that, you know, speaking of family, get your get your wife involved. Like my wife's involved in everything I do. Like mm-hmm. you know, she 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 found she found that that one of the mobile home park deals I bought, and and I bought that one for sixty cents a dollar. She found the land development deal that we're making seven hundred grand on. Like she got all that. Like get your wife. Like two is better than one. Like mm-hmm. if, I don't care how badass you think you are. Like if you got a wife that's on the same page as you. Yeah, like we have a relationship, but we're a partnership. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. we're on the same page, like we're building wealth. Like it's so much fun when you do it that way. Like, yeah, the sex is great and I love my wife and all that good stuff. But like, dude, we, like we're a partnership. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Like, it just, it becomes more powerful, right? Yeah. Uh, so what is your biggest struggle right now? My biggest struggle, man, private money. like. I started using private money. I've gotten addicted to it, mm-hmm. and now like I'm buying everything. Like it's like I'm a little kid, because <laughs> you know before I was very careful about what I'd buy, mm-hmm. but now I got access to private money. We we just took down six flips in the past two months, uh, and just in one market. I'm sorry, seven flips, and and, and I'm like, and I usually don't do that many in one time, mm-hmm. but I'm not t- I'm not typically having I'm not having to rehab them and, and keep an eye on them. My, my partner in that market's doing it. Mm-hmm. So now I'm just looking to you know scale private money. I think that's the biggest piece now. Like I know how to find deals. I have buyers, I have sellers. Now I'm gonna blow up the money side of it because then I can scale. Yeah. Uh, what is your superpower? Do communication. I'm, I, I, if you come and if you come and compete against me, like mm-hmm. good luck. I, and that's not boastful. That's not. I'm, I've just done so much personal development that I'm just confident. Yeah. I'm confident in my ability. Um, I just got skills, man. <laughs> hey, I, I, that's your thing. I I, I get it. Um, so, what is the greatest lesson that you have learned? Forgive people and and and. Uh, 
and just love people. Just love people, man. Like mm-hmm. I love people. That's why I'm a coach. Matter of fact, one of my students in here, Ben, he's he's my number one student. I don't know if he yeah. told you that the guy made seven hundred fifty thousand in in one year in my program. Like I love that. Like yeah, absolutely. To, to know that I helped him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just I love talking to people. I have that that nurturing side of me. That I think that's why I like to coach. You know, some guy I was on the phone with that. He's like, hey man, why do you coach? Like, and don't give me some BS thing of you trying to leave a legacy. I said, no, dude, I'm trying to make money. I said, I can't leave a legacy unless you pay me. To. I said, I yeah. need money to leave a legacy. So, Absolutely. No, so no, I need you to pay me. It's about money. Yeah. But in order for me to leave a legacy, I need money. Right. So, but yeah, it's, um, it's, very, it's a spiritual thing for me. Helping people is a spiritual thing. Every time I help people, I just get more help. Like somehow God, the universe, you know, whatever religion you are, like I get help every time I help people. Like, it, yeah. you know, so it's just, it, it's just funny how things work out, right? But um yeah, man, just just don't don't be selfish. Like me and my wife, like we went, we've been together twenty years. We have five kids. Like we had the weirdest, craziest. You know, she got me pregnant when I was a junior in high school. Yeah, you're pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we had like a, a tumultu- tumultuous. Uh, how you say that word? Tumultuous. Tumultuous. Sorry, I'm from South Louisiana, as you can tell. <laughs> um, relationship young, so and, and we had to go through a lot of stuff where we had yeah. to both be selfless, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 really give of ourselves. But we're finally seeing the, the fruits of our, you know, you know, it, took, it takes a long time, you know, we've been together 20 years, but we're, we're finally getting like, well, man, we're doing good in life, Yeah. you know? So, and, and it took a lot of selflessness and sacrifice. Dude, she sacrifices so much for me, like, I'm working, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know, recently we, we, we've we changed our whole lifestyle. Like we pulled all our kids out of school. We bought a house, we renovated it right now. We bought, we're getting a, a teacher. We're homeschooling all our kids. And you notice I, I brought two of my kids with mm-hmm. me. I would have brought my babies, but it, it's been too much but we're gonna bring all our kids with us when we travel and see the entrepreneur journey because nobody's doing it. No, that's absolutely true. I don't know anyone doing that. Um, so you're in town for a reason. You wanna talk about that? Yeah, I'm speaking at uh, Impact Players Tour um, with Grant Cardone, Elena, Jared, uh, Joel Gonzalez, a good friend of mine's putting on the event, uh, a slew of speakers that, you know, hitting up different aspects. We got, you know, I'm talking about wholesaling and, and, and other, a lot of stuff that we just talked about right here. Mm-hmm. Um, but every speaker's got their own little thing. Grant will do his thing. Elaine will probably talk about Empire. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jared will probably talk on sales. Chris Noggle will be there talking probably about private money. Um, we just, it's, it's impact players, right? We just want to be impactful in people's lives, like to give them, like, let's be real. M- most people are not going to be successful at entrepreneurship because yeah. it, it's so hard. But what if it's you? Mm-hmm. What if you're that guy that's successful? Yeah. Dude, go for it. Like, go to an event like that. Events like that change your life. I went to Growth Con one, and it like blew my mind it's massively. Yeah. He Ben Mearson went to Growth Con two, where I met him. It changed his life. Yeah. Growth Con one changed my wife's mindset too. Like, she didn't want to. She's like, I don't want to go to Grant Cardone, Chris. Like, I'm gonna go shopping. Or, you know, <laughs> but Grant called it. Yeah, he did. But, uh, you know, after that, she was just like on board, like get around. Listen, there's not a lot of people like me and you. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of people like this on the planet. Yeah. We're probably like we're top one percent too. That's being real. Like most people just want to live small, go to get their nine to five job and mm-hmm. just live. Do what they were told to do. Do what they were told to do. Like there's not a lot of people. And the reason I'm telling you there's not a lot of people is because you got to find other people like me and you. Mm-hmm. And other people like me and you are at these events. Absolutely. Because you got to be a little nuts to go and spend ten thousand dollars between plane tickets, hotels, and tickets to go to this event. Like it's it's a confront. It's going to be a lot of fear, mm-hmm. but it's going to be the greatest thing you've ever done. Yep. So if they want to go, how do how do they? Uh, Im- impact players forward slash tickets, uh, or just go to go on Facebook and type in Impact Players. I don't want to give you the wrong information. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So. Uh, Think about a final thought. And then guys, um, you know, we had a lot of people reach out to Max and me about our workshop coming up in September. If you guys are still interested uh, in, in seeing that'd be something that uh, would work for you, uh, go to disruptors.com, fill out the application and we'll see if it makes sense for you uh, and us to all work together. Uh, and then we got Jory Alston coming here next, when, uh, I'm sorry, tomorrow uh, to defend, you know, Miami, the honor, cause they were, they were dragged down in one of our previous podcasts by our good friend Jamil. So. Uh, check him out tomorrow. He's going to be talking about how he's buying properties with uh, no money down and 0% interest. Um, so last thoughts from you. Do what's hard, guys. Like, do the hard work. Like, don't be that guy that's, like, 
trying to look for that business that makes a million bucks a year while you're sitting on on the beach like it may exist but probably not mm -hmm. i'm sure somebody's doing it but like th th that's like you have a better sh chance of getting struck by lightning yeah confront th the barriers of life like do the hard stuff now and love it like love the fact that you like like i love to be in the game i love like to get beat up and because i'm growing because mm -hmm. the journey is the destination everybody's yeah. looking for that destination now like i'm living in the greatest time of my life right now mm -hmm. I'm freaking doing all kind of crazy stuff. I'm expanding. I'm speaking on stages, um, flipping houses in three states. Like I'm doing stupid, crazy stuff that, like, if I stop and think about, it, like, whoa, if I stop, I, I, I may like freak myself out. But it, it's an exciting time in life, and it, understand that the journey is the destination. Yeah, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love it. So if someone wants to get hold of you, how will they do that? So they can uh, they can follow me on. Facebook at Chris Root Entrepreneur, uh, Instagram at Real Estate Root. I'm, I, I, I pretty much do Facebook Lives, Instagram stories on everything I do just to give constant content. And it's not just on real estate. Like, I'm, real estate is just what I do for a living. Like, mm -hmm. I'm big on life and, you know, partnerships with my wife and friends and family and just growing as a, as a being. Um, and if you're interested in my coaching, go to chrisroot.com, book a call with my team and pick up my free book. I wrote a book called The Source of the Deal. It tells my whole story. Pick it up uh, at uh, thesourceofthedeal.com. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, man. And thank you guys for watching.